Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to talk about the difference between adding versus multiplying fractions. This is probably one of, no, it is the biggest math algebra problem I see my students make across all math levels from algebra one to calculus. And if you don't know how to add or multiply fractions, you are at a severe disadvantage because you're going to be doing this in just about every single level of math in your high school and college career. So if you don't know it, you're in trouble. So we'll start with adding fractions, which by the way is essentially the same rule as subtracting fractions. It's just a difference of plus versus minus. The goal is to get a common denominator. And what that means is if you want to add one half plus one third, you need a denominator that factors into both two and three. The easiest way to get a common denominator is to multiply your denominators together. So two times three, that's six. Your common denominator will be six. Now, then what you say is, okay, well, how do I get six for both of these fractions? I need to multiply something by it. Let me be very clear. If I want to get a six in the denominator here, I'm gonna multiply by three over three. And if I want to get one third to become a six, I'm gonna multiply by two over two. You do the same thing in the numerator as the denominator, that's just the rule. So three times one is three, over three times two is six, plus one times two is two, and three times two is six. Now I can add these fractions together because they have the same denominator. Now, when you add fractions, you are going to add the numerators and you're going to keep the denominator the same you're not going to change the denominator you're not going to add the denominators and so what you get is five over six and that's the final answer for one half plus one third we're going to do a bunch of examples of this so don't worry let's do another one right now how about i have one fourth and i want to add two sevenths Again, the easiest way to get a common denominator is to multiply your denominators together. Four times seven is 28. And if I want to make the first one a 28, I multiply by seven over seven, and I'll multiply this one by four over four. So for the first fraction, it's gonna be seven times one, so seven, and seven times four is 28, and then plus two times four is eight, divided by seven times four is 28, Again, I add the numerators and keep the denominators the same, so 15 over 28. Okay, good. So two more examples we need to look at for addition and subtraction. This next one, I have three halves minus one twelfth. First of all, it's subtraction. That doesn't matter. The strategy is still the same. I would probably recommend you start by doing two times 12. You get 24. However, you don't actually have to do that. And the reason why is because there's an easier way to get to a common denominator. Remember that common denominator just means the, the same denominator. And the examples we saw before, it wasn't very easy to get that. Like for instance, if I wanted two and three to be the same, six is the first number they both have in common. If I wanna think of four and seven, 28 is the first number they have in common. For two and 12, 24 is not the first number they have in common. Actually, 12 is the first number they have in common. How do I know that? Well, because if I consider this three halves fraction and I multiply by six over six, I'm gonna get the same denominator. So it's gonna be six times three, which is 18, divided by six times two, which is 12, minus one twelfth. And look at this, I have the same denominator. That means I can now subtract them. I get a final answer of 17 over 12 because all you do is subtract the numerators and don't touch the denominators, and this is your answer. Now let's say you didn't know that. Let's say you didn't know about this, you know, that 12 is the common denominator. Let's say you do it and you get 24. You'll get the same final answer, it'll just be a little more steps, which is fine. So if I do the same problem, but the slow way, I would multiply three over two by 12 over 12, and I would multiply one over 12 by 2 over 2. And so 12 times 3 is 36, divided by 12 times 2 is 24, minus 1 times 2 is 2, and 12 times 2 is 24. So that's going to be 34 over 24. 
which you, if you notice, is not the same answer as 17 over 12. But both of these can reduce because if you want to reduce fractions, in this case, you can divide both by 2 in the numerator and denominator. 34 divided by 2 is 17, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. Ah, it is the same answer once you reduce. Now, for the earlier problems we did, obviously we did not reduce, but that's because they couldn't, like for instance, 15 over 28, you can't divide both by two, it's just not gonna work, that's the most simplified form. And now one more example I wanna look at with adding and subtracting, it's if I have an example like this, let's say I want to do six minus three fifths. You'll notice that this one isn't even a fraction, right? Like how am I even gonna subtract this? Well, you gotta make it a fraction, and whenever you don't have a fraction, you just put it over one, just like that. So really what this is, if I wanna get a common denominator, it's gonna be one times five, which is five. So I multiply the left one by five over five, and you can multiply the right one by one over one if you really wanted to, but anything times one is itself, so it's not really necessary. You'll get the same thing, just three fifths again. So for the left one, five times six is 30, divided by five times one is five, minus three over five. Now I can subtract these. Looks like I'll get 30 minus three, which is 27 over five. And that's my final answer for that one. So again, for addition and subtraction, you add or subtract the numerators, keep the denominator the same, and you need a common denominator. For multiplication, it's not like that at all. You don't need a common denominator. You don't keep the denominator the same either. Here's what you do. Let's say I want to multiply three halves times four fifths. I love multiplication, it's the easiest thing. All you do is multiply your numerators and then you multiply the denominators. Like it's really that easy. And then you're gonna try and reduce if you can, which we'll do that in this problem. But first let me multiply the numerators. Three times four is 12, divided by two times five is 10. This can reduce because they're both divisible by two. And when I do that, I get 12 over two is six and 10 over two is five. That's as much as you can reduce. Now, just so you know, a common strategy for multiplying factors, I'll even do the exact same example, three halves times four fifths. A lot of times you'll try to reduce as your first step if you can. So for instance, I do see something that reduces here, the two and the four. Well, if I rewrite my four, and I rewrite that as two times two, one of the twos will cancel, and I'm left with three over one times two over five. It's three over one because whenever you're left with nothing, you there's still a one there, you can't write zero. And then on the right fraction, one of the twos canceled, so you still have two over five. So multiplying these together, three times two is six, and one times five is five. Same answer, that's very cool. So for these next few problems I do, I'm going to try to reduce first and then multiply because that's easier for me and I think it's good practice. So let's say I have five halves times eight over 25 and I want to multiply these. So again, I'm trying to reduce first. I know the five and the 25 will cancel so that the numerator is just one here and 25 will become five because I divided 25 by five. There's still a five left and then eight in the numerator, two in the denominator, that two is gonna to cancel to a one, and the eight is gonna to cancel to a four. That's because the eight divided by two is four. So really what I have here is one over one times four over five. Multiply numerators, multiply denominators. I'll just get a final answer of four fifths. Now let's say you don't like the reducing strategy. That's fine. You can still do it this way. I'll show you what it looks like. It's going to be five times eight, which is 40, and two times 25 is 50. Again, just multiply numerators and denominators. And then, is there anything that these can divide by? Yes, you can do two, but I think it's gonna be a lot faster if we just divide by 10, because they're both divisible by 10. So it looks like that's gonna become four over five. Same answer. And now there's one more thing I wanna talk about today, and that's dividing fractions, which is definitely the hardest out of any of the things we talked about today. And that's because dividing fractions looks like this. Let's say I want to do three halves divided by four fifths. You'll notice it's the same example we did for the first fraction, except this time we're dividing it. 
So if you want to divide fractions, what you need to do instead is you need to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Now, what does any of that mean? Well, first we need to know what a reciprocal is. So let's talk about the reciprocal. A reciprocal just means you flip the numerator and denominator. So for instance, if I have one half and I want the reciprocal, the reciprocal is two over one. If I have five over 11, the reciprocal is 11 over five. And if I have 99 over 1000, well then the reciprocal is 1000 over 99. You just flip it. So in this case, I want to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. What that means is you're gonna take this four fifths, you're gonna take the reciprocal, which is five fourths, and now you're gonna say I have three halves times five fourths. So again, we started with this and we turned it in to that because that's what you do. You multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. That's how you divide, it's just the rule. I didn't make it up. So numerators you multiply together, three times five is 15 and two times four is eight. There's our final answer. Okay, so let's do a couple more. What if I have one third and I wanna divide by nine over five? Well, again, all I'm gonna do is take the reciprocal of my second, which is five ninths. And I'm gonna say one third times five over nine. And that's going to be numerator, one times five is five. Denominator, three times nine is 27. Final answer. One thing I wanna tell you to be very, very careful of. If you try and reduce first, like you know, you reduce this three and you reduce that nine to a three like that, that is horribly wrong. You cannot reduce with division. Do not reduce with division. I promise you, you will get the wrong answer. However, if you want to reduce once you rewrite it as multiplication, that's fine. The problem is nothing reduces here because the three and the nine are both in the denominator. They're not gonna reduce. Okay, so let's just look at one more. Now let's say I have two over seven divided by 12 over 21. Again, I'm just gonna take the re reciprocal of that fraction, 21 over 12. So two over seven times 21 over 12. This one can reduce, so I will. The seven and 21 reduce to a one in the denominator and 21 divided by seven is three. Two and the 12 reduce, so two divided by two is one and 12 divided by two is six. So really what I have here is one over one times three over six. That actually reduces again because three divided by six, that reduces to a one and the six reduces to a two. Looks like my final answer is just gonna be one half, which is correct. And again, if you don't wanna do that, that's fine. You would just say two times 21 over seven times 12. Two times 21 is 42. Seven times 12 is 84. And then if you have a calculator, or if you just keep dividing by two enough times, you'll eventually see that this is equal to one half. So that's how you add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. I hope that made sense. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.